When I was just getting started saving money and learning to live a frugal lifestyle, I found out very quickly that it was not easy. There's a lot that comes with frugal living and personal finance that just doesn't get taught and there's so much you have to manage and I was overwhelmed because I didn't know where to start. Man, I would watch YouTube video after YouTube video and I would read book after book on how to manage my money until I was able to come up with the simple yet effective approach to frugal living. And here it is. What's up, man? My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so that you can better yourself every single day and live life on your own terms. On this channel, I talk about saving money, increasing your income, and getting out of debt, as well as various personal growth topics. And I bring this all back to my own personal experiences to serve as a motivation to you. Let's get into the video. So the most important thing to understand when you're just getting started with frugal living is to understand exactly how much money you make per year. And that means after taxes. Now, all you really need to do is look at your last paycheck and that'll tell you exactly how much money you make after taxes. But if you're in a similar situation to what I was in, where I just got hired on at the job and I hadn't received a paycheck yet, and you're not sure how much you're going to make after taxes, all you gotta do is this. Just head over to smartasset.com and go over to their paycheck calculator and enter in your yearly salary or even just your hourly rate. Then based on whatever area you live in, that's going to determine exactly how much you get taxed. There's also an option up there that allows you to choose how often you get paid. And for most of us, that's bi-weekly, which is every 14 days. But there's several other options up there. So if you're someone who gets paid once every month or once every 15 days, there's an option for you and it's going to calculate how much your take home pay should be for that paycheck, depending on how often you get paid. Now, I didn't know this at first, but the reason that it's so important to know exactly how much you take home after taxes is because if you come into this with the mindset of, I make $50,000 a year, but you really only bring home $39,000 a year, that's going to set you up for failure because you're going to make plans based off of what your full income is and not based off of what your actual income is, which in this case is a whopping $11,000 difference. So clearly the issue here is it looks like you're able to spend about $1,000 extra per month than you actually can afford to spend. And I bring this up because I started to fall into this trap before I even realized the trap existed. I chose to live in a two bedroom townhouse with two and a half bathrooms by myself instead of choosing to live in a single bedroom apartment all because I based where I lived off of my full income, not what I took home after taxes. So since I opted to live in a two bedroom townhouse instead of a one bedroom apartment, that meant that I was spending about $150 extra on rent than I should have been paying and I could have been pocketing that $150 per month that whole time. Don't fall into that trap, bro. With that said, the next thing you should make sure you do is actually have financial goals for yourself. And I'd highly encourage you to write them down and give them each a due date. Don't just write down the goal, give them a due date. I'm telling you, bro, that's what I did and I'm telling you, that's cold. If you know you wanna have your $30,000 of student loans paid off in the next five years, write it down. If you know that you want to buy yourself a house within the next eight years, write it down. If you know you want to save $10,000 every year, write it down. These are just a few things that I wanted to accomplish when I first started working, but once you identify a few powerful financial goals that you really want to accomplish for yourself, and you give yourself a time that you expect to accomplish them, that establishes discipline between your spending and saving habits. So earlier when we talked about understanding how much money you take home per year would essentially be broken down so you can figure out how much you take home per month. And once you start to see what's really going in and out of your bank account every single month, you'll start to understand the relationship between your spending habits and how close you actually are to your financial goals. For example, I knew for a fact that I wanted to save $20,000 within my first two years of working. So once I looked at exactly how much I took home every single month and subtracted my necessities, you know, rent, utilities, gas, food, and insurance, I saw how much money I would 
truly have left over each month. And I knew that I had the power to decide if I wanted to spend that money or save that money. Well, despite the fact that I knew I had plenty of money left over at the end of every month after paying all my bills, that wasn't enough to keep me disciplined enough to keep up with my financial goals. I needed something to track my expenses because sure, I reached my goal of saving $20,000 within my first two years of working, but I wasn't able to fast track that goal until I did this. I downloaded this budgeting app called Mint, except I really didn't treat it as a budgeting app. I really just used it to watch how I trend every single month for unnecessary spending. Keep in mind, this app automatically syncs to your bank account. But anyways, my favorite part about this app is the fact that it showed me every single dollar that went in and out every single month, which months I spent more, which months I spent less, and it broke it down right down to the category of which I was overspending the most in. Can you guess what that category was? Restaurants, bro. I love food. Just in case you're curious, the restaurants I hit up the most were McDonald's, Chick-fil-A, Cookout, Panera Bread, Chili's, Applebee's. Yeah, like I said, bro, I love food. And eating at these places were pretty much an everyday thing. So from there, I realized I needed to set some rules for myself on how much I could actually spend each month and how much absolutely needed to be saved if I were going to reach my financial goals. And all I really had to do there was break down all my unnecessary expenses. And I went into this knowing that I was going to continue to spend money on some of the things that were deemed unnecessary, whereas I knew that there were other unnecessary expenses that I knew for a fact that I was going to get rid of. There were some recurring bills like, you know, the internet bill and Audible that I knew for a fact that I was not getting rid of. Those were my two non-negotiables right there. But when it came to stuff like clothes and video games, I felt like I had plenty of both of those and getting more wasn't really adding any value to my life, nor did I really have the time to play video games. So I just dropped those two all together. Then when it came to stuff like going to the movies, going out with friends, going out to eat, that was stuff that I really, really enjoyed to do. So I just decided to give myself an allowance every month to spend within any of those categories. And that allowance was $300 every month. That way I knew every month I had $300 that I could spend guilt-free on whatever I wanted. But the funny thing is, as I built up more and more financial discipline, I found it more difficult to actually spend the $300 every single month. And whenever I had money left over from the $300, it would go straight into my savings account along with the money I already had automatically going into my savings account to reach my financial goals. By the way, all I really did was I just timed my savings. I knew I wanted to save $20,000 in two years, so I saved accordingly so that I would reach that amount in two years. But here's some pro tips for you. If you aim to save slightly more than what is required for you to reach your financial goal, like say $20 more, you will fast track your success. Another pro tip, whenever you make extra money, whether it's tax returns, side hustle income, or overtime, make sure you put a good portion of that into your savings that'll also fast track your progress. Look, bro, in my experience, I found that having extra money that I pretend doesn't exist is so much better than having extra money and then going out and blowing it on stuff that I don't even need. Speaking of savings, the best advice I can possibly give you is to set it up automatically so you don't have to think about manually moving your money to your savings account. At least for me, whenever I'm moving money over manually into my savings, it's easy for me to either forget or talk myself out of it by giving myself some compelling story as to why it can wait for another month. At least for me, whenever I would manually move my money from my checking to my savings account, it was very easy for me to either forget or to talk myself out of it by giving myself some compelling story as to why it could wait. Now, when it comes to savings, I really want you to understand that there's levels to it, bro. There's your regular savings, there's your emergency fund savings, there's your specific goal savings, and there's your loss of income savings. Now, with you just starting out, 
Obviously, you're not going to focus on all of those at once, but they are going to become part of your financial goals. And as you build up each savings account, it's so, so, so important that you keep them separate. When you clump up all of your savings accounts together, it's very easy to lose sight of what portion of money goes into which savings goal, which can essentially throw off your momentum for all of your savings goals. Now that I gave you all that advice, that has to be matched with a strong, unwavering, long-term mindset. Remember in the beginning when I said this isn't easy? Well, saying no isn't easy either. Not caring about what other people think isn't easy either. Not giving in to what other people say you should do and what you should want in your life isn't easy either. And real quick, I'm gonna give you an example of a huge financial mistake that I almost made when I got my first job. I let my professors and even some family members convince me that I wanted a master's degree because I would make so much more money with a master's degree and most young people don't have master's degrees in engineering. Well, here's the thing. Getting a master's degree never really crossed my mind because I'm not a big fan of going to school. The four years that I spent in college getting my bachelor's degree, that was more than enough for me. Plus, my salary was already pretty high as it was, and by my math, I could have just done a few years within my field and get more than I would have gotten with a master's degree. Not to mention the fact that getting a master's degree does not guarantee a higher salary, like, at all. It doesn't even guarantee a job. So I knew all this, yet I was still almost talked into going back to school, getting a master's degree, getting into more debt, and not even being guaranteed a higher salary after graduating with the degree. So I knew all this, yet I was still almost talked into going back to school, getting into more debt, and not even being guaranteed a higher salary once I got my graduate degree. In fact, when I asked what I could expect to be making after I got my graduate degree, they told me $65,000 a year. Bro, I was already making that. But the reason I'm telling you that, bro, is because I had my mind made up that I did not want to go to grad school. Still almost got talked into it. And the scary thing about that is it would have drastically set back my finances. So what I'm saying is, bro, stick to the goals that you have for yourself because you're going to hear a lot of things from a lot of people that are going to deviate from what you actually want to do. And these people are going to be your friends, your family members, your coworkers, even your significant other. And since these people are close to you and they see you pretty often, they're going to have an uncanny ability to make their plans for your life sound so much better than the plans that you have for yourself. Something else you're going to hear your family and friends tell you. Come on, man. You got to treat yourself. You can afford it. Come on, man. Why you got to be so tight with your money? Come on. Why don't you ever spend money, bro? What are you even saving all that money for, man? And that's my whole point, bro. Whenever you have a specific goal and vision for where you want to be financially, not everyone is going to see it or understand it. So it's up to you to hold yourself to that standard. And with that will come a lot of temptation. The moment you really start to get into a good rhythm and you really start saving and you really start pushing towards your financial goals and you really start saving some good money, boom, now you can afford that car you've had your eyes on every day. Now you can afford that dream vacation. Now the biggest temptation of all sets in. And that's lifestyle inflation, bro. And that's a bigger, better gym membership. That's getting a new car with a bigger car payment that requires more gas for less miles. That's going out to eat more. That's going out on more vacations. Essentially, it's just spending more money just because you're making more money. And you do this until you lock yourself inside an endless cycle of spending more money as you make more money. To the point that you end up spending more than you're actually making. And before you know it, you're drowning in bills and debt. And I'll tell you straight up, that water is hard to get out of. So that is exactly why frugal living and being intentional with your finances is so important, bro. You've got to be in the mindset of no one controls what I do with my money except for me. Therefore, I have to be deliberate and intentional with every financial decision I make because everything is on me. 
There's no relying on a job to get me a raise. There's no relying on a family member to help me out every single time that I do something stupid and buy something that I know for a fact I can't afford. It's about self-accountability, man. Most importantly, it's about planning and being consistent with your actions towards that plan. Anybody can sit here and make a goal of becoming debt free in the next two years, but you've got to ask yourself, bro, am I putting in the work to achieve the goal of becoming debt free in two years? That's the video for today, man. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance, personal growth so that you can control you, control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Stay cold.